being healthy, spirit, soul, body, mind, will, emotions. Jesus came for all of us. There's nothing about you that God doesn't care about. I want you to get that. God cares about and is concerned about everything that concerns you. No matter what a small detail it is, God cares about that. And if you will invite him in, he will come in and begin to work a process of healing in every area of your life. It could be finances, it could be your social life. Maybe you're lonely or maybe you've been hurt so bad in the past that you now isolate yourself and you're afraid of intimacy. God wants you to be healed in every area of your life. He came to make us whole. He doesn't want us to be born again and just have a, a bunch of problems in our life draining us all the time. And so let's start again in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, because it's just such a great scripture. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things and make you pure and holy, consecrated to God. And may your spirit and your soul and your body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was asked, what is the most important commandment? He said, this is the most important. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. The Lord doesn't want us just to love him on Sunday morning. He doesn't want to just uh, save you, watch you live a miserable life and then let you go to heaven when you die. He came to give us life, and that word life is Zoe, and it means life as God has it. Now, I don't know how good God's life is, but if I can have that, I sure want to keep pressing on until I have the kind of life that God wants me to have. I'll be honest with you. I think that we owe it to Jesus to have the best life that we can possibly have. How many of you want your children to have good lives? Well, I mean, we know nothing about parenting compared to what he does. <laughs> so if we, you know, like I like to surprise my kids. And I was thinking the other day, God loves to surprise us. I mean, he, Jesus died so we can have an intimate relationship with the Father, not so we could all have some kind of our own little brand of religion and separate in all these little groups and fight with each other. That's just the silliest thing. And I love our conferences and other conferences like this because we have people here from every denomination that you could imagine. And I can tell you, when we get to heaven, there's not going to be a Baptist group and a Catholic group and a Lutheran group and a, uh, the weird Pentecostals are not going to be over here in another group. Amen? And so we need to learn what's important. And the thing that's important is to learn to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. You cannot have an obedient life without having an obedient thought life. So, <laughs> I'm going to say that again. You, you're not going to have an obedient life without first having an obedient thought life. And I mean, I was a Christian for many, many, many years and loved God and couldn't figure out why I just kept having so many problems. And I, I didn't understand this stuff about the mind. I just thought that I couldn't help what I thought. Well, I can't help what I think. And I didn't have any idea that I could cast down wrong thoughts or I could shut my mind against thoughts, that I didn't have to just receive everything that fell into my head and just take it as my own and roll it over and over and over in my mind. You know, I share that my dad abused me when I was young. And you know, still, after all these years, sometimes just out of nowhere, I'll find myself thinking about some of the things that he did to me. And you know, the minute that I become aware of what I'm thinking, I, I just say no. And I shut my mind to it and don't let it in there. See, the enemy will sneak up on you and try to 
put stuff in your mind, hoping that you'll take it as yours. And if we think about the wrong thing, it's going to affect our moods. It's going to affect our behavior. It's going to affect our relationships with other people. As the man thinks, so does he become, Proverbs 23, 7. And no matter how many times you may or may not have heard teaching on the mind, this is something that we need to hear over and over and over and over and over. Between our thoughts and our words, those are two messages that we will never get tired of hearing. You can choose your own thoughts. You don't have to just think whatever falls in your head. I used to wake up in the morning and I would think, oh, I'm depressed. So I would just get up and be depressed all day. Well, now if a thought like that comes to my head, I, I will probably say out loud, I am not depressed and I'm not gonna spend this day being depressed because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now. We have the Word of God so we can fight the enemy with the Word of God. The Word of God is not just a little, bunch of little black ink on white pages. It is full of power and it is your weapon against Satan. Let him who has my word speak my word faithfully.